Hey friends, what up? Welcome back to Babylon Tama. Today we're studying Daf Lama Zion. Where is this person? Who is it? How's it going? <laughs> There's a person that I, I, I sometimes groove with and she gets on the groove. She goes, how's it going? <laughs> Anyways, whatever. Um, so, so, uh, where are we? Right, so we're on Daf Lama Zion of Masech the Beya. Um, yeah, anyways, so we're continuing with our discussion about, we had an awesome Mishnah yesterday at the end, which talked about um, shvuses and rishuses and mitzvahs. Um, these are things that you're not allowed to do on Yom Tif and uh, Shabbos also. So we're going to sort of explore that a little bit further. Um, a little bit we're going to go into detail about the, we said that the only distinction between Shabbos and Yom Tif is Ochel Nefesh, we then ask a question about what about the fact that we said that on Yom Tif you're allowed to put the roof, the, the, the fruits through the roof, but not on Shabbos. What happened to that one? We get into the machlokas that we've seen before between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yoshua about what happens when two animals, a, a parent and a child, fall into a pit. How can you, what, what do you do in that case? And then we get to another Mishnah about the uh, Trum Shabbos, but uh, about, no, really like Eruve uh, Trumen. Uh, which which doesn't scare us anymore after we've learned Erevin. So, friends, let's jump in. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Was that word? How's it going? I think so. <laughs> All right, let's get started here. Um, fine. Inquisition was like, okay, where are we? So, okay, we had a Gavaldiga Mishnah, and in that Mishnah, we had said that, um, we had said, that okay, that there are three types of uh, of isure there are bonon on Shabbos and Yom Tif, and there are shvuses. We hear about shvus all the time, and that is when the rabbis say, "Look, we don't want you to do something." We talked about it at the end. For example, climbing a tree. Look, we don't want you to climb a tree. Maybe you'll break a branch. Whatever it is, just stay away from it. Now there are other things where where it actually gets more interesting. There's the concept of a rishus, where actually it sounds like it might be a mitzvah of sorts, or there's you know actual mitzvahs that we say don't do this mitzvah on Shabbos or Yom Tif. For whatever reason. So now we're moving on. So we described what shvus is worth at the end of the day yesterday. For example, climbing on a tree, swimming, riding animals, in Yonim Ka'ele. Three lines in the bottom of Eilein Mishum Rishus Lodonin. So we said that, uh, what's an example of a Rishus? Well, we don't adjudicate, I think is a word. Of course, um, our dear friend Dennis will confirm that um, if he wishes to. Um, but I believe adjudicate is like judging. Um, and even, they even share the J thing. So, the mitzvah kavit. Why is this under the rishus category? It shouldn't, this, judging is a mitzvah. So why is this only under the rishus category? Well, if you have a fellow who is a judge, but maybe isn't the best, the most qualified judge. So in that case, um, there, you know, it would really be better for somebody else to adjudicate. Um, but no, so it's not like quite a mitzvah. If he was the best judge, that would be more of a mitzvah. But, uh, if he's not quite the top judge, so then it's more of a rishus. All right. Very, very, very nice. Um, okay. We don't, um, get married on Shabbos. Why not? You're doing a mitzvah. Oh, so again, so meaning, why, why, why are we considering this to be a rishus? Um, and we'll see why you don't get married and why you don't um, um, uh, judge and stuff, adjudicate. We'll see that in a minute. But anyways, why is this under the rishus category, sort of more the optional almost mitzvah category? Isn't getting married an actual mitzvah? Um, so l'tzricha de isle isha uvanim. Well, if we have a fellow who was already mekayim the mitzvah of Purivu, he already has a wife and children. So... I, I imagine that if he already, I could, imagine if he, if, if his wife passed away also, but he has two children, then also it would be like a new mitzvah. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not going there. Anyways, the, 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 the Gemara says, if you're already, certainly if he's already married and he's got one wife and he's got children, so he's already been makai in the mitzvah of Puravu. So, you know, it's not, so, so that's why we don't consider it a, um, mitzvah. Uh, but it's more of a rishus to get married that it's still good to uh, have children, but, uh, You've already technically, you would say, the mitzvah. The Cholzim Glom Yabmin. We don't do Yibum or Chalitza on Shabbos or on Yom Tif. Also, of a mitzvah kavit, isn't Chalitza and Yibum a mitzvah in the Torah? So, Lotzricha Dika Gadol, mitzvah begadol Yabim. 
that, well, um, say if he has an older brother, so really the older brother should um, uh, do the yibum. So, so, um, so really the older brother should do yibum. So for him, it's not really a a, a mitzvah. It's more of a rishus, okay, because really the older brother should be doing it. V'chulu taima my gzeim shum yichtov, and in all of these cases, yibum chalitza, getting married, uh, adjudicating, we're concerned that you might end up signing contracts and writing. Um, so we don't want you to write on Shabbos or on Yom Tif, So therefore, we don't do these things. Ve'edim shum mitzvah. These are the things that are mitzvahs that the Chacham said don't do on Shabbos or Yom Tif. Lo makdishin v'lo mayrichin v'lo machrimin. We don't make things basically uh, kadosh for the Beis HaMikdash. We also don't say I'm going to give somebody's value to the Beis HaMikdash because this is very similar to like tra- business transactions. And we don't want you to do business transactions on Shabbos or on Yom Tefillah. We don't separate Shumas and Maishas. Pshita, we know that we don't separate Shumas and Maishas. So Tani, Rev Yosef, Lo Nitzcha Ela Litnam Lekoyen Bo Bayom. Well, even if I was planning to give the Chumas and Maishas to the Kohen that day, I guess I might have the hard minute to say that, right, that, that, that it would be okay, right? So meaning, if I have a whole bunch of fruits and stuff, nobody knows whether or not I separated Chumas and Maishas. And if I take some Chumas and, so if I take some like Chumas and Maishas from the fruit and then put them aside, well, then it's clear that I'm, that I'm, um, separating Chumas and Maishas and that wouldn't be a lot. The Chiddush over here is even if I separate, I have a whole bunch of fruit. Nobody knows if they're Tevel or if they're, you know, Hulin. If I then just take a whole bunch and just, Go up, take some fruit, give them to the Kohen. Nobody needs to know that it's Chumas and Maestros. Maybe I'm just, it's Yom Tif. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling gracious. I'm feeling like I want to help out my friend the Kohen and give him some Gishmake fruits. So, so maybe that's all it is. It's not actually Chumas and Maestros. So even so, um, still we're saying don't do that. Even though it doesn't necessarily look like you are separating Chumas and Maestros. Fani Mili Peri de Tvile Me Esmo. And now this is specific, when we say don't separate chumas and maestros, that's specifically talking about um, fruits and vegetables that already were tevel, I guess fruits, what, uh, yeah, fruits, I guess, that were tevel already yesterday. Meaning you should have separated chumas and maestros yesterday, or at least you could have even separated chumas and maestros yesterday. Okay. But something like challah, if you make a dough on Yom Tif, well then that you can separate Chumas and Maestros because that only came into being on Yom Tif. But something that you could have already separated before Yom Tif, don't separate on Yom Tif. Now the Gemara asks a question. Um, technically, all of them are, are Shvuses, right? What, what's a Shvus? Shvus is the rabbis say, we don't want you doing a certain thing. So, you know, we want you to refrain, to hold back, to rest from doing certain activities. So I don't understand when it comes to like Kiddushin, right? Getting married or something. It's a, it, oh sure, it's a Rishus, but is, isn't it also a Shvus? Or like, right, we said, uh, my, you know, a Shumas and Maestris. It's a mitzvah, it's not also a Shvus. Okay, what, 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 it seems like Shvus should be like an umbrella for all of these things. So, where am I? Um, Amr Reb Yitzchak says Reb Yitzchak lo mi ba'yu akamar. It's saying not only this, but even that lo mi ba'yu shvus gre da'aser da'aser. Don't say that only a shvus is aser el afilu shvus de reshus nami aser lo mi ba'yu shvus de reshus de aser el afilu shvus de mitzvah nami aser. That we're saying that it's meaning it's not saying that this is only a rishos and it's not a shavos. We're not saying that this is only a mitzvah and it's not a shavos. The point is that, look, when it comes to ride to climbing a tree, so, so okay, so don't climb a tree. Like, what do you want me to tell you? There's no, there's no argument to be made why I should be climbing this tree on, on Yom Tif or on Shabbos. So we say, look, don't climb trees. You might break branches. Just stay away. But when it comes to separating trumas and maestros, I'm doing a mitzvah. I might think, so let me do this mitzvah. So we say, even when you're actually doing a mitzvah, still the rabbis are saying, we don't want you to do these things. Or even when it comes to like uh, getting married, when you're already married, so then, so then, you know, still the rabbis are saying, like, don't do these, right? Which is like a rishos, right? It's not only the regular, just plain old shvuses that don't have any sort of justification for why you should be doing these right now, but even things that you can, you know, that seem to be mitzvahs, even those things, the rabbis are saying, you know, don't, don't do these things. 
All right. Call Elu Biyomtiv Amru, and then we said Ein Ben Shabbos, and Biyomtiv the Shabbos El Ochon Nefesh Bavad Givaldi. So our Mishnah had said there's one distinction between Shabbos and Yomtiv. That is fruit preparation. Shabbos it's Osir, and on Yomtiv it's Mutter. Now it would it would seem that that is the only distinction. Friends, if we go back to the previous Mishnah, Mishnah we said that you're allowed to lower um, fruits through the skylight of the roof on Yom Tif, but not on Shabbos. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Friends, I bet you weren't expecting that, huh? <laughs> so yeah, there's another one. <laughs> um, so what do you do about this? Who's got a suggestion? Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess it wasn't that funny. Uh, whatever. For a minute, um, we have a contradiction. Mishilin Derech Haruba, Yom Tif Lo B'Shabbos. The Mishnah had said that you're allowed to lower fruits uh, through the skylight on Yom Tif, but you can't do that on Shabbos. So that's another distinction. So Amr of Yosef, Lokasha, Herb the Ezra, Herb Yoshua, give Valdi. So if Yosef says, well, different Mishnah is different Tanoi. The first Mishnah that says that you are allowed to put the fruits through the skylight because we're concerned about Hefzid Mamun, that we don't want you, your, your fruits and stuff to get ruined. So that is Rabbi Yoshua, who's concerned about Hefzid Mamun, as we'll see in a minute. And our Mishnah that we read just now, which says that there's no differences between Shabbos and Yom Tov, only food prep. So, but what about putting things through the, the skylight? No, no difference. It would be the same, also on both. So that is Rabbi Eliezer, who's not concerned about Hefzid Mamun. So let's see. Um, Titanius, we learn in a price. Also, as we know, of the board. If you have an animal and its child that fell into a pit and it's yomtiv, so now you can't, you cannot eat them both on yomtiv because lo also as we lo sishchatu biyomechon. Okay, we don't slaughter an animal and its child on the same day. So now, so if they fell into a pit and you can't eat both of them on yomtiv, Rabbi Eliezer Omer Maile Sarishon Amnas the Shochto Shochto. So take up the first one. And save it temporarily until you slaughter it. And then you slaughter it. Alright. And the second one, you taka keep alive so that it doesn't die. So one of them you kill, the other one you keep alive. Alright, go figure. Akoponim. So what's Rabbi Eliezer saying? Rabbi Eliezer is saying that, um, that ultimately, you know, even though both of your uh, animals fell into a pit. You can only pull out one of them. Look, you can't slaughter both of them. Pull out one of them, you know, and you can slaughter that one. The other one, I don't know, do what you can to try to keep it alive, but like, you know, it is what it is. Rabbi Yoshua Omer says, Rabbi Yoshua, Maile Sarishan Amanasa Shokhto Ve'eno Shokhto. Rabbi Yoshua says, actually, what you can do is you can take out the first animal out of the pit in order to slaughter it, quote unquote, wink, wink. But you don't actually slaughter it. And then you say, you know what? Actually, I think the one that's in the pit is going to be tastier. And then he says, you know what? Let me, let me see. Let me, I think I'm going to like the other one better. So you say, forget it. And you pull out. You don't throw the first one back in. <laughs> but you do pull out the second one as well. And then he can choose which one he wants. So we see that Rabbi Yoshua is saying, look, both of his animals fell into the pit. We have to be concerned about Hefzid Mamun, that, right, that these animals can, can, you know, they fell into a pit, they can get damaged, the person can lose out on money, they can have financial loss. So Rabbi Yoshua says, look, you can be tricky and say, take out the first one and say you're going to eat that one and say, you know what, actually maybe I want the second one, take that one out. Um, and then Mimele, you saved, you saved your, 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 your money, essentially. So we see that Rabbi Eliezer is not concerned about Hefzid Mamun. He says, look, just take out the one that you want to eat and that's that, leave the other one there. Whereas Rabbi Yoshua says, um, you could take them both out. So apparently Rabbi Eliezer is not concerned about Hefzid Mamun, therefore he would say you cannot put the um, fruits through the skylight, and therefore he will say that there are really, in fact, are no differences between Yom Tov and Shabbos except for Ochel Nefesh. Um, whereas Rabbi Yeshua would say we are concerned about Hefzid Mamun, and therefore if we're concerned that the fruits are going to get ruined in the rain, so you could put them through the uh, roof, and he would be the author of that Mishnah. Amr Abai. Abai says to Rav Yosef, who suggested that um, it's a matter of uh, uh, difference between Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua. Mimai, how do you know, why are you so convinced that we can um, just explain the difference between the two Mishnayas by saying it's a machlokas Rabbi Eliezer and Rabbi Yeshua? Who says that they would agree with that sentiment? 
Dilma, Arkan Lukom Rabbi Eliezer Hassan, maybe Rabbi Eliezer says over there that only take one of the animals out, held the Efshi Bifarnosa, because it's not guaranteed that you're going to lose out on the other animal. After all, Rabbi Eliezer says, look, you could take one out and slaughter it, and the second one keep it alive. So you're not losing the second one. He's not saying that you're, you know, you know causing financial loss. Keep the second one alive until after Yom Tov. Whereas in this case, with the fruits, when it's going to rain and get ruined, maybe Rabbi Eliezer would say, look, in this case, they're definitely going to get ruined. There's not much you could do about it, so maybe you, you would be able to bring it inside. So you can't basically fix it. Lo, maybe he, he would change his mind and say, you would be allowed to bring in the fruits through the skylight. Or else, maybe the reason why Rabbi Yeshua says by the animals that you can be tricky and bring them both out because for that exact reason. Because after all, you can be tricky. But over here, over here, um, where are we again? Where is here? Where am I? What am I doing? Wait, what? Where are we? Ah, but by the um, fruits, how can you be tricky when it comes to the fruits? When it comes to animals, okay, you're playing games, right? You're saying, take out the first one, say you want to slaughter it, and say, actually, you know what? I think I want the second one. It's going to be tastier. You could play games. What kind of games are you going to play with the fruit, bringing them in through the through the window, to, through the skylight to save them from the rain? So maybe maybe Rabbi Yoshua would say that that would not be a lot. So it's inconclusive. It's hard to say um, that it's necessarily a machlokas between Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Shua because it's not clear that Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Shua would agree with that. Elam or Papa. Rather, says Rabbi Papa, lo kasha, there's no problem. Habe shamai, habe silo, uwa. It's machlokas between be shamai and be silo. That sounds very nice. It's not, as we learn in the Mishnah. Be shamai om emotzi in loas akotin, veloas alula veloas sefer Torah. The Shusar Rabbim. So, it's funny, the Mishnah says shas is I feel like taking me somewhere else. Oh, there it is. Exactly. You'd base off. That's what I was looking for. So we had a, um, we had a mission earlier where we saw that Beishamai says that you're not allowed to carry on Yom Tif. Whereas Basil says, Basil Matir, Basil says you are allowed to carry on Yom Tif. Right? We said, whole, uh, since you're, right, Basil says, look, since you're allowed to carry, um, on Yom Tif for food, so mainly you can also carry for whatever you want. Beishamai says, no, you can only carry for food. You can't carry for other things. Um, and therefore, so, so, so we'll apply the same thing over here. That Basil will say that just like you're allowed to carry, um, right, that just like you're allowed to carry things with Shusarab, you're also going to be allowed to move these, um, fruits that are muksa. And therefore, Basil would be the Mishnah that says that you're allowed to put the fruits through the, um, ceiling, through the skylight. However, um, um, the Mishnah that says that there, the only difference between Shabbos and Yom Tif is food prep. But you would not be able to, implying that you would not be able to put the fruits through the skylight, that would be Beishamah, who says that just like you're not allowed to um, take these into Rishul Sarabim, uh, you're also not allowed to move, um, right? just like you're not allowed to carry things, you're also not allowed to move these um, uh, things that are, right, that are mukse because of Hafsid Mamun. Dilma Lohi, but maybe that's not true. Arkan lo ko'amir Beishamah yohosum ela ha'utzav al tiltal lo. But one sec. Maybe while Beishamah says that you would not be allowed to carry in Rishul Sarabim, right, Hotza, but maybe Tilto, maybe moving things around would be okay. So, Atu Tilto, Lav Tzor, Hotza, Uwa. Mitaka saw Rashi explain this earlier that, Kilu, what's the whole point why you're not allowed to move things? I mean, we saw that it was Gzera, I don't know, we saw, we saw in, in Gemara and Shabbos, Nechemya made Gzeras, but anyways, says the Gemara, and Rashi mentioned this earlier in the Mesechta, that you could say that the reason why you're not allowed to move things on, on Shabbos, why there is the concept of muksa, that we don't want you moving things, is you might end up taking things out to Rosh Hashanah. So therefore, if Memele, Memele, if, if Beishami is concerned about Otsa when it comes to other things, so then it'll also be concerned about uh, moving things. And therefore, we, it, it is valid to say that, um, accord, that, 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 that Beishami, who says that you're not allowed to, uh, carry Rosh Hashanah, on Yom Tif would also be the one who says that you would not be allowed to bring in these fruits from the roof to save them from the rain. Um, okay, that sounds uh, very nice. Now we get to a new Mishnah. Uwa. And this Mishnah is kind of Eruvini. Let's see. Let's see. You'll see what I mean in a second. That an animal and vessels are like the person who owns them. That if I have an animal, the animal can only go as far as I can go, right? Tchum Shabbos, 2,000 Amas in every direction. 
my animal, whatever my Tchum Shabbos is, that's my animal's Tchum Shabbos. I'm also be to live no ole ro'e. A fellow gives over his animal to his son or to a shepherd. I believe this is an yomtif hari elu kragli abaylim. So still, they are, the, they're, 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 um, you know, they can go as far as the owner can go. So if on yomtif I bring my animal to a shepherd, um, still that animal can only go as far as I can go, not as far as the shepherd can go. Kelimam yuchodim le'echol mina'achin. Shebabais. If you have brothers and, you know, they, and, you know, they, they have their own clothing, well then I read Elu Kiraglov. So, each person can go with his own clothing, however far he can go. Vishayd Mu'chadin, Harein Kimakum Shalachin. But, if these clothes are kind of shared by all the brothers, well then they can only go as far as the common, the lowest common denominator. So let's say if one of the brothers decided that he was going to make, uh, an Eruv, Tchumen, two Amis in the north, well then, um, basically, He's not going to be able to go in the south at all because he only has two Amis north from his Eruv Tchumen and two Amis south, which is basically to, you know, where their house is. Um, so, 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 since that brother who made the, the Eruv 2000 Amis in, in the north would not be able to go south whatsoever, so none of the brothers can go south. And even the brother who made the Eruv in the north 2000 Amis away, he can only go you know, 2,000 Amas outside of the city because only the brothers can go that far because they didn't make any Eruv at all. So he wouldn't be able to go a four, whole 4,000 Amas since they all share this clothing and they would only be able to take this clothing as far as all of them would be able to go. All right, sounds like fun. Very eruv kind of thing. Hashol Kli Me Chavero a fellow who borrows a vessel from his friend, Me'erev Yomtev, on Erev Yomtev, which means that when Yomtev started, it was already in his possession, Kiragli Ashol. So then they can go as far as the borrower can go. Be Yomtev, Kiragli Amashol. But if the fellow borrows the vessel on Yomtev, so then, then when Yomtev started, they were still by the lender. So they can, this vessel can go as far as the lender can go. A woman who borrowed from her friend spices, Water, salt for her dough, harielu kraklishten. Well, then they can base this. These ingredients can only go as far as both of them can go. The lowest common denominator, because when yomtiv started, um, it was in the possession of the lender, the person who's giving these ingredients. So therefore, they can only go as far as the, that person. But at the same time, the borrower who's handling them, um, you know, is going to take them wherever she can go. But she's going to be limited essentially to as far as the other the lender can kind of go so basically they got she's got to stick into area where both of them can go um Rabbi Yehuda says that uh, you know water you can kind of take around because there is nothing you know there isn't you know Rashi says we're specifically talking about water that's like in like a mixture of foods and stuff where you can't really recognize the water anyways so I guess they don't uh, then you don't have to worry too much about whose tchum they're going to because they're not recognizable. Says the Gemara Masnisen, Dilo Kribdosa. So let's say our Mishnah is not like Ribdosa. How come it's not like Ribdosa? The Tanya is learned by Ribdosa. Omer says Ribdosa. Ba'amila Abashol Omer. Some say it's Taka Abashol. Okay. Halkech Behebe Mechaveru Me'erev Yomtif. A friend um, uh, purchases an animal from, right? Reuven purchases an animal from Shimon on Erev Yomtif. Okay. Even if Reuven, or what happened? Reuven bought it from Shimon. So even if Shimon only delivers it on Yom Tif, they're like Reuven the buyer, right? You can go as far as Reuven the buyer can go because when you know he already made the purchase before Yom Tif. Okay. A fellow who gives over an animal to a shepherd on Yom Tif, and even though he only gave it to the to the shepherd on Yom Tif. He can go as far as the shepherd can go. So our Mishnah had said that if you give an animal to a shepherd on Yom Tif, it is governed by the trum of the of, of, of the person who owns the sheep. Um, whereas here we're saying that it, it's governed by wherever the shepherd can go. So, and this is Ribdosa. So clearly our Mishnah is not like Ribdosa. So I feel tame Ribdosa. So you can even say that this is like Rav Dosa. For Lokash, it's no problem. It depends how many uh, shepherds there are in town. If there's only one shepherd in town, that's what Rav Dosa is talking about. Where you know that Mimela, that sheep is going to the shepherd. So it, that's why it's governed by wherever the shepherd can go. But if there's more than one shepherd in town, well then you don't necessarily know 
where the um, sheep is going. You can go to either one of the shepherds. Therefore, when Yom Tif began, it wasn't in any of their, we can't consider it to be, you know, making Yom Tif with the, any of the shepherds because we don't know which one it's going to go to. Therefore, it's just, you know, it, it goes based on the owner and wherever he can go. Okay. De Kanami, De Katani, Livno, Leroy, and you can also infer that we're talking about where it's not guaranteed that it's going to the shepherd because after all, the Mishnah mentions that, um, you know, maybe he'll give it to his son, maybe he'll give it to the shepherd. So it's talking about where there's not one automatic shepherd. And therefore, um, in our Mishnah, it can only go as far as the owner can go, whereas Ribdosis, it can go as far as the shepherd can go because that's the only shepherd in town. Shmamina, fine. Omer Rav, Babachanam, Rabbi Yochanan, says, Rav, Babachanam, Rabbi Yochanan, Allah, Kribdosa, that the Allah is a Kribdosa, which is an interesting thing to say because it doesn't seem like anybody's arguing. Dosa says, you know, when there's one shepherd in town, it goes wherever the shepherd can go. The Mishnah says when there are two shepherds in town, it goes wherever the owner goes. But everyone seems to be agreeing, you know, on one on what would happen with one shepherd and what would happen with two shepherds. But how could Rabbi Yochanan say that the Allah is a Kribdosa? But doesn't he also say that the Allah is like a Stamishna? We said that the animal and the vessels are like wherever the owner can go. To which the Gemara says, why, uh, what, what are you getting worked up about? We answered this question already. The mission is talking about where there were two shepherds. Rabbi Dosa is talking about where there was one shepherd. What, what, like, what, what do you want me to tell you? Let's go weiter. Tana Rabbanan. The Rabbi is taught. Shnaim sheshalu chaluk. Echod b'shutfis. You hear this, friends? Reuven and Shimon, they decided that they're going to share some clothing. Zelelech bo'shachus levis ha-medrish. Vezelikonis bo'arvis levis ha-mishter. Ooh, So... So one of them is going to go and use it to steig and to learn Torah in the Beis HaMedrash. The other one is going to use it for partying at night. I feel like the fellow who's using it for partying at night is getting the better deal, Lemaisa, right? And the guy who's going to the Beis HaMedrash has to go with, who knows what that clothing is going to smell like the next day. The guy who goes to party, what does he care? Anyways, the area of all of the Tzofen. So now you have these two fellows and they're sharing this clothing. And now when, you know, when, when, when Yom Tif starts, so it's basically, um, they're sharing it, which means that, like, they, they, yeah, they share responsibility for the Eruv Etchumen. So Zerv, all of the Tzofim, Zerv, all of the Darim. Well, if Ruven makes an Eruv Tchumen in the north of the city, and Shimon makes a Eruv Tchumen in the south of the city, Zesh Eruv, all of the Tzofim, Malach, the Tzofim, Kragle, Misha Eruv, all of the Darim, Vizesh Eruv, all of the Darim, Malach, the Darim, Kragle, um, friends, we should definitely at least just do that outside first. It's not hard. This is like ABCs of like Eruvay Tchumen. We can do this in our sleep at this point um, because we learned Eruvay. Basically, um, whatever. If, if Ruvain makes an Eruv in the north, so let's say he made it a thousand Amos into the north, okay, which means that he can walk 3,000 Amos in the north of the city and 1,000 Amos to the south. So what we're saying is both of them can take the um, garment south of the city, only 1,000 amos, because that's only the place where they could jointly um, go, right? And similarly, if um, Shimon made an Eruv to the south of the city, 1,000 amos, that he can walk 3,000 amos to the south of the city. That also means that he can walk 1,000 amos to the north of the city. So um, that's kind of where they'll both be able to walk. So they can both only take that garment 1,000 amos north of the city. Um, if they both, if Ruven made his tchum 2,000 amos to the north of the city, which means that he's not allowed to go to the south of the city at all. And Shimon made his uh, uh, Erev Tchumen 2,000 amos to the south of the city, which means that he can't go to the north at all. Well, then they're not going to be able to take that um, that, that garment out of the city whatsoever. Uh, so that's, that's that's all it said, right? We could read it again, but the heir of all of the Tzofim, the heir of all of the Darim, that if Ruven made the, an heir of Tchumen in the north and Shimon made an heir of Tchumen in the south, the heir of all of the Tzofim, uh, Ruven, who made an heir in the north, Malach the Tzofim, Kragli, Misha, heir of all of the Darim, he could walk in the north as far as Shimon, who made his heir in the south, can walk in the north, right? Meaning, if Shimon made his heir in the south a thousand Amis away from the city, that, so that means that he could walk to the south three thousand Amis, and to the north he can only walk one thousand Amis. What it, we're saying is that Ruven, who made his heir of Tchumen in the north, is still limited by how far he could walk to only places that Shimon would be able to walk. In our example, 1,000 Amos to the north. And Shimon, who made his Erev in the south, can walk in the south, only as far as Ruven, who made his Erev in the north, can go, which in our example is the first 1,000 Amos. 
So be matzu is tchum, and if they put the tchum like right in the middle, I, meaning if if if, if we're, they put themselves like right in the middle of the two tchums, meaning that Ruven made an error of two thousand amos to the north, and Shimon made an error of two thousand amos. Every two thousand amos to the south, so basically nobody's able to leave the city at all to the north or to the south. You can't take it anywhere. Or if you're not even in a city, if you're just like in a house, well then you just gotta let the uh, garment stay put. Itmar, it was stated, friends. So you have Reuven and Shimon, and they bought a barrel of wine, l'chaim, and an animal together. Rav Amr says, Rav chovis muteris. So the barrel, they could just kind of divide up the wine, and each one can take it wherever his Tchum Shabbos allows him to go. Uveima Asur, whereas the animal, even after they slaughter and divide it up, the animal can only be taken as far as both of them are able to walk, since uh, they, they jointly owned the animal when Yom Tif started, so they can only take the meat as far as both of them are able to walk. The lowest common denominator. Whereas Shmuel says you can't even uh, divide up the, um, you know, even even the wine after it's divided can only travel as far as both of the partners are able to travel. Um, so my kasava Rav. So now what's the deal with Rav? Oh, so if Rav says that Brera, which means that you have Reuben and Shimon, and they jointly purchased a barrel of wine. So Mimele, whatever, however they divide up the wine, you could say Yej Brera, that already, you know, retroactively, you know, photoshoppingly, um, you could say that from the outset, the wine that this fellow took was the wine that was really meant to be his all along. And therefore, he's not affected whatsoever by Shimon's Trum Shabbos. Reuven gets his wine, Shimon gets his wine. Reuven can take his uh, wine as far as he can go. Shimon can take his wine as far as he can go. The wine that Reuven has is the wine that Reuven was supposed to have. The, Shim, uh, the wine that Shimon has was is the wine that Shimon was supposed to have all along. And therefore, they could both take it wherever they want. I feel a bit of But if that's the case, then why is that any different than the animal? Why don't we say the same thing? Slaughter the animal, divide it up, and then whatever Reuven gets, Mimele will be what he was meant to get. Whatever Shimon gets, Mimele will be whatever he was meant to get. And they should be able to take it as far as they as they want. And if you're going to say that according to Ravi doesn't hold a Brera because he doesn't hold a Brera, that's why he says that you're limited with, by the animal as far as both of them can go. Well, if that's the case, then how come the wine, um, we say, he says that Reuben can take it as far as he wants, as far as he's able to go, and Shimon can take it as far as he's able to go. But if we're not saying a Brera, then how, does, how do we know that Reuven isn't really taking Shimon's wine and Shimon isn't really taking Reuven's wine and they should only be able to take it as far as both of them are able to go? So the Olam Kasavar Yej Brera Ua. So the Gemara answer is, okay, really Rav holds that there is Brera. And therefore, when it comes to the wine and they divide up the wine, so Mimele, Reuven is getting the wine that he's supposed to be getting and it was Kona Shvisa with him and he could take it as far as his Tchum Shabbos allows him to go. Shimon gets the wine that he was all along supposed to be getting and, um, you know, he could take it as far as he's able to walk within his Tchum Shabbos. Because, where am I? Fine. Vishanya Behema De Ayanke Tchum In Me'adode. But, when it comes to an animal, it's different. Because an animal is all one organism. And the organism works in, 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 in concert. Is that like a thing? It works together. And therefore, you know, even the limbs that uh, Ruvain's getting, where, you know, when Yom Tif came, was still, like, somewhat connected to the limbs that Shimon was getting, right? Because they're all, like, part of the same organism and, like, and like nurturing from each other. And therefore, Mimele, part of Ruvain's meat, right, Ruvain's meat is kind of still connected to Shimon's meat. In that sense, you know, you, you can't, it's not entirely his. Like, you can't necessarily say that the part that Ruvain got were the parts that Ruvain was supposed to get, and that's it, because even the parts that Ruvain was supposed to get are still sort of you know, connected to the parts that Shimon was supposed to get in that they were like all part of the same organism and kind of like working together and supporting each other and nurturing from one another, whatever. So therefore, that's why the, while wine, you know, sort of, sure, it was all in the same barrel, but once you divide up the wine, we could go back and say, look, the wine that Reuben got was the wine that Reuben was supposed to get. The wine that Shimon got was the wine that Shimon was supposed to get. Okay, great clean split, move on with your life. But even the meat that Reuven was supposed to get is still intimately connected to the meat that Shimon was supposed to get since they were all part of the same organism and, and sort of nurturing 
on each other. All right, that sounds fun. I'm relay Rav Kana Rav Asi Lirab. But now Rav Kana Rav Asi ask a starke kasha to Rab. This a muktzel or choshishu. This a trumen choshishu. Shosik Rab. Now Rav Kana Rav Asi Asi say I don't get it. When it comes to eating the animal, right? So Reuben and Shimon have this animal. They slaughter it. Reuben takes his meat. Shimon takes his meat, and we say it's fine. And we don't say that there's no issue of muksa with Ruvain's meat because really Ruvain's meat is intimately connected to Shimon's meat. And Ruvain's not thinking about Shimon's meat. He doesn't have Shimon's meat in mind. He has his meat in mind. But what about the fact that Ruvain's meat is nonetheless still intimately connected to Shimon's meat and still that, in, in that they were still part of the same, in that they were part of the same organism up until now, right? Meaning if we're saying that there's this whole thing about like different parts of the animal nurturing from each other, so then we should then have to say that Ruvain wouldn't be able to take his meat because it's muksa. Because his meat is really connected to Shimon's meat, which he doesn't have in mind. And Shimon's meat should be moksa because his meat is really connected to Reuven's meat, which he didn't have in mind. But we don't say that their meat is considered moksa. And therefore, just like we don't say that their meat is considered moksa, because they're not, we don't say that they're like all nurturing from each other and therefore they're moksa. So then when it comes to Tchum Shabbos, shouldn't you also say, if we're going to say Breira and that Reuven's really getting the meat he's meant to get all along, Shimon's getting the meat he's meant to be getting all along. Well, then we should say, okay, clean split. Reuven should be able to take it to his Tchum Shabbos. And uh, Shimon should be able to take it as far as him, tchum sha- his Tchum Shabbos. Right? There's no connection between the two, right? Again, if we're saying that there's no muksa, that we don't invoke this whole nurturing thing to say that it's muksa, well then don't invoke the whole nurturing thing to say that that that, that they're limited at all in their Tchum Shabbos. That's the kasha of um, Rav Khan and Ravasi. And Rav was stumped. Shosu Rav. Friends, we're going to stop over here. It's a little bit high up on the page, but things get a little... Uh, technical, and we're just gonna, we'll, 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 we'll get to it tomorrow. Uh, that's what we're gonna do. So friends, today was the uh, Lamazain of Mesechta, um, Beitza. We started off talking about, like, things that are considered Rishos and Mitzvah, right? Different things essentially that the Chacham say that we don't want you to do them on, uh, on Shabbos and on Yom Tif. Um, we then got, we, we then asked a question that at the beginning of our parak we said that, well, in our mission, we said that there's only one difference between Shabbos and Yom Tif, and that is Ochel Nefesh. We ask the Kasha, and we say that, well, what about the mission at the beginning of the parak, which said that you're allowed to put, take the fruits and, and put them inside the house? So that would seem to be another distinction. So we wanted to say, so by, uh, Rav Yosef wanted to say that, um, well, the mission says that you're allowed to bring in the fruits to the house out of concern for Hefzid Mamun, for losing out financially. That would be Rabbi Yoshua, who says that when you have an animal and its child who falls into a pit, and um, he says you could take, you could essentially be tricky and take both of them out. So, so that sees that, so that shows that Rabbi Yeshua is concerned about Hafsid Mamun. So that must be the, the first mission in the parak. Our, the second mission in the parak that says that there's no difference between Shabbos and Yom Tif, only Ochel Nefesh. So that must be Rabbi Yezer who says that you're only allowed to take out the animal that you're going to slaughter. The other one you have to leave there. We want to argue that he's not concerned about Hafsid Mamun. And therefore, he would say that, you know, you're not allowed to bring the fruits into the house through the skylight. And, um, and the only difference between Shabbos and Yom Tov is Ochel Nefesh. Uh, Abai asked Kashas on that, maybe said that that's not the case. Rav Papa then said, actually, it's Beisham and Beisela. The Beisham is that just like you're not allowed to take things to carry in Rishos Rabim, only Ochel Nefesh, nothing else. So here also, you wouldn't be allowed to bring um, the fruits into the house just to save them from uh, Hefzid Mamun. You wouldn't be able to move them. And Beisela says that you are allowed to carry things in Rishos uh He'll also say that you'd be allowed to move these um, these um, um, fruits and things in order to save them from getting ruined. We then got into Tchum Shabbos kinds of things. That when you have items, you know, how do we define, you know, items that are being shared between different people, how do we define how, whose Tchum Shabbos things are dictated by? So basically, um, essentially it has to do, essentially it has to do with um, whose property it was in when um, Yom Tif begins, or Shabbos begins, Yom Tif begins. So, so, you know, so if it was in, I don't know, Ruben's property, so it'll be governed by Ruben's Tchum Shabbos. If it was in Shimon's property, it would be governed by Shimon's Tchum Shabbos. But if they're shared, well, then we're going to have to find, like, uh, common denominators. Um, all right, friends, that was Daf Lama Zion. I hope you enjoyed. Peace out.